Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor. Welcome to a miserable day in Fort Pierce in Florida. And today we're going to be looking at how to do an ILS approach. So join me in the cruise. Okay guys, so we are now established in the cruise and what we're going to have a look at now is uh, briefing the approach to the ILS runway 10 right at Fort Pierce Airport. And I'll show that up on the screen here. And uh, basically we'll brief it from the top of the chart and then go down and make sure we've got everything set up as we want it. So, it's the ILS or localizer from a 10 right. We're going to be doing the ILS approach. And we just make sure the uh, chart's in date. The frequency for the ILS is 110.55. So we're going to make sure that we've got that set up in the relevant navigation radios here. So you'll see here I need to change this frequency to 110.55 and I can also have some backup set here as well so I might want the uh, Treasure VOR set up a bit later on so I'm going to have the um, ILS set up primarily in NAV2 and I have the Treasure VOR set up 117.3 uh, for a bit later which may become necessary if we need to go around. 117.3, that's set. Okay, now I'm going to make sure I've got my courses set up. So I can, uh, I'm not going to be using NAV2 until the intercept of the uh, localizer. So I'm going to make sure I've got that set up for the inbound uh, runway heading. is now set up there and also I'm going to uh, actually I'll be I'll just leave this as it is for now because we're going to be going northbound initially in order to intercept the uh, the ILS there now I can see here that I've got the India Foxtrot Juliet Delta uh, so that is the ident so we can also identify them by selecting uh, nav 1 and nav 2 and listening to that Morse code and then comparing it to the Morse code on the chart and we'll see that we've identified them and that they're usable. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And uh, yeah, so basically now we can brief the rest of the uh, chart. So we've got the 110.55, that's set in NAV1 and NAV2. The final approach track of 097, I've got that set up on NAV2 and I'll set that up a bit later on NAV1 as we come to the intercept. Uh, the elevation of the airport is 23 feet, so we need to make sure we know that for uh, uh, because we're going to be landing on the QNH or the uh, normal altimeter setting in America. And then there's a note here saying autopilot coupled approach not available below 720 feet MSL. That's not really applicable to us. Uh, we've got our uh, frequencies here. We're not going to be using those today. And then we'll just have a look at the route. So we're just coming around to the south of the airport. And we're going to go for the initial approach fix, which is HASOC. Uh, you, you can see there to the south of the chart. Uh, the minimum altitude on that uh, particular part of the approach there is 2,000 feet. And you can see it says NOPT, which means that we don't need to do the procedure turn, which uh, comes up later at Zaza. So after HASOC, we're going to be going 017 degrees at 2,000 feet, inbound to Zaza. At Zaza, we turn right. 097 track inbound so that's when we'll be switching over to the localizer as you can see here we're currently on GPS mode which means that we are tracking the GPS so actually being a bit lazy and I've got the autopilot on right now but I'll be disconnecting that shortly as we come around to Hassock. Uh, so after Zaza then we continue down the three degrees uh, glide path and uh, I'm sorry after Zaza sorry we uh, go to 1800 feet and uh, that takes us over Tiki, which is the final approach fix, then down the 3 degree glide path. And the minimums for the approach, 273 feet, as you can see there. Now if we need to go around, the misapproach here is in the top right. The misapproach is climbed to 1,000 feet, and then a climbing left turn to 2,000 feet on a heading of 080. And then we intercept the Treasure VOR Radial 132, all the way up to Angie there over the water. And then we hold there at 22.1 uh, DME 
and you can see the hull there. I'm not going to be showing you the go around today, just the basics of how to fly the ILS approach. Uh, so you'll see here we are starting to come round northbound now towards Hassock. And uh, the heading after Hassock is going to be 017. I'm just going to go ahead and set that in the um, in the heading bug here. 017 will be about there. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, so um, I'm going to use 80 knots for the approach uh, speed. And uh, in order to work out what a three degree uh, glide path is for rate of descent, what we're going to do is multiply that uh, ground speed by five. So we'll be looking at around 400, f uh, 400 feet per minute rate of descent, plus or minus the wind component. Uh, but that's a good target uh, vertical speed to set initially uh, so that we know where we are. And I'll be slowing the aircraft down to 80 knots as we get uh, in towards Tiki as we descend to the 1800 feet uh, platform altitude. So it's at or above 1800 feet at Tiki. Uh, so we don't need to uh, worry too much about hitting that altitude. Just make sure we're at or above it. And we can actually intercept the uh, glide slope a little bit before Tiki and that'll make sure that we're on the correct uh, on the correct path. Uh, yeah, the MSA is 1600 feet um, so we need to obviously keep that in mind but there's not very much terrain around here anyway uh, to worry about so not extremely concerned about terrain but there are some masts around which is the reason for the, uh, the MSA being what it is. So here we are coming around to Hassog now and that's going to take us inbound to uh, Zaza after that and uh, yeah so 017 I'm going to go ahead and set that up in the uh, OBS here 017 after which time uh, it will be 097 inbound on the uh, on the ILS and here we go so I'm going to start flying it manually now been lazy enough sorted and there we go now a manual flight so just making sure I'm keeping the scan going here starting at the attitude indicator and then working out to the uh, peripheral instruments The weather situation is not ideal. The uh, way that I've set the weather up, it should be pretty much on the minimum, so we should get to see the lights as we hit the uh, as we hit the minimums there of 273 feet. As you can see, it's a little bumpy. Autopilot was doing a much better job than I, than I am of flying it, unfortunately. Uh, 017 inbound on the uh, on the ILS. Oh, sorry, towards Zaza. So as we approach Zaza, I will change the mode from GPS to VLOC and that will enable us to actually track inbound on the on the localizer. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the OBS now ahead of time to 097. Now I'm established inbound to Zaza. And that will save me doing it while I'm turning, uh, which is always a risk. There's 097. I could just use the heading bug now to make small corrections uh, to make sure that I'm staying on the track inbound to Zaza. I'll be using flaps 10 as well for the configuration uh, for the ILS, so it'll be 80 knots and flaps 10 prior to the intercept. And then as we intercept, uh, start the descent keeps it nice and simple. So keeping that scan going, attitude indicator down to the DI, up to the attitude indicator, across to the altimeter, back to the attitude indicator, across to the airspeed, and then attitude indicator, and then back over to the course deviation indicator to make sure that I'm staying on my track. And I'm also having a sneaky little look at the GPS every now and again for situational awareness. Now the white arc speed for the flaps uh, does not uh, count for flaps 10, uh, so the maximum speed for flaps 10 is 110 knots in the Cessna 172, so don't worry too much about that. Now what I'm keeping an eye on here is nav 
2 now, the CDI for NAV2, uh, which will tell me when the localizer starts to come in. Uh, as that starts to come in, I'll switch over to uh, GP, uh, from GPS to Vorlock, and then I'll start using NAV1 in order to, uh, to track inbound. I'm just going to have a closer look at the instrument here as we get a little closer. What we'll see soon is the uh, as we approach Zaza, we'll see the localizer start to come in, and we need to anticipate that and start a right turn inbound. There it comes. So I'm going to start the right turn now. Let's do it every one should just about catch it. And then I'm going to switch over to uh, VLOC here, and that will then switch over the uh, CDI so that I'm using the localizer now and not the GPS. Set 097, I'm going to set the heading bug as well. So the heading bug set to approximately 097 there. Now I can make small corrections in order to maintain the localizer. Now what I'm going to do is start the descent to 1800 feet, just a slight reduction in power, just letting the nose bring itself down. A nice couple of hundred feet per minute rate of descent, it's only 200 feet to lose, so it's not really too much of a big deal. And I'm just going to switch the screen over here to allow me to see my ground speed. to the left of the heading bug there just a little bit in order to try and get back onto the localizer. I might need to come just a little bit further left. And now I've pitched up, I'm going to let the aircraft just gently slow, slow down in order to uh, slow down for the approach. We got three miles so I'm not too fast. I've just taken 100 or 200 RPM off uh, for the descent and now I'm just going to re-trim it and just uh, slow the aircraft down a little bit. Just keeps it manageable. Let's bring the heading bug just to the left a little bit as well as this heading seems to be working out. Oops, a little bit low there. Just correct that with a little bit of pitch. Localizer's looking good. And now I'm just continuing that scan as I was before. So it's more like, it's like a sort of T scan. So attitude indicator down to the DI, up to the attitude indicator, across to the airspeed, that looks sensible. Back to the attitude indicator, across to the altitude, that's looking good. Back to the attitude indicator, across to the CDI. And I can see now that I'm back on the localizer, just a couple of degrees to the right now, in order to try and maintain that and see how it works out. Keeping that scan going, let's bring the heading bug to the right by a couple of degrees. And I can see now the glide slope seems to be active. We've got one mile to go to Tiki. As I said, we need to cross Tiki at 1800 feet or higher. But half scale deflection now on the glide slope, so that's looking quite sensible. And basically Tiki is going to be the intercept for the glide slope at 1800 feet, so here it comes. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to reduce the power to around about 1800 RPM. I'm going to set for a approximately 400 feet rate per minute rate of descent and I'm going to use flaps 10 which I have just selected. And there's the outer marker. I've set the pitch for approximately a 400 feet per minute rate of descent which is just below the horizon there 
and I'm looking for 80 knots. Now the vertical speed indicator does lag, so you can't use it that accurately, uh, but it does help once you're established to make sure that you're achieving approximately the correct rate of descent. You can see here that I've got slightly above the glide slope, so I've just pitched down slightly in order to re-catch that glide. And I can use the vertical speed indicator just to make sure that I'm exceeding that 400 feet per minute rate of descent in order to get back onto the glide. I'm a little fast as well, so I'm just going to reduce the power slightly. And that will also help get back onto the glide slope. A little bit to the uh, right of the localizer as well, so I need to come to the left, just keeping it just within the heading bug there, as the only small corrections are really required here. And it's just a matter of keeping that scan going. Still a little bit on the fast side, so I'm going to reduce that power a little bit more as well. And that will help me get back onto the glide slope. The localizer is coming back in now, as is the glide slope. So I'm going to reset my reference values here, back to 0 0.97 thereabouts and set that just below the horizon pitch for that rate of descent. Still a little bit on the far side, reduce a little bit more power, make sure I've trimmed the aircraft. And here scanning the attitude indicator mainly, but then also scanning outwards from the attitude indicator to the CDI to make sure my localizer and glide slope are sensible, to my airspeed to make sure that I'm not too fast or too slow. About 80 knots what I'm looking for, which is approximately what I've got. Down to the DI to make sure the heading's sensible, that I haven't drifted off somewhere. And back to the C back to the attitude indicator, back to the CDI. And basically keeping that scan going, don't overemphasize any instrument. You see there I'm dropping slightly below the glide slope now. So it needs a slight pitch up in order to regain that glide. Maybe a little bit of power in order to maintain the speed on the localizer which is good to maintain that heading small correction just to catch that glide again a little bit of power just to maintain that speed small corrections here we're so close in now we only need to make very small corrections in order to get ourselves back onto the correct path so really just a small pitch adjustment and then reset your reference value just below the horizon there should do the trick. And what we're looking for when we get to about 273 feet is uh, to make sure that we can see the runway lights. And as you can see they're actually already starting to come into view. But we'll just pretend we can't see them for now. Make small corrections for the glide slope and the localizer. So you can see we're slightly to the left of the localizer now. And you'll see that it's like flying down a cone. There's the minimums, 273 feet. We've got the runway in sight. So now it's just a matter of continuing the approach and configuring for the landing. So, full flaps. There's the inner marker. Full flaps. And then we just continue down the approach. Got the runway in sight. Maintain the glide slope as best you can. Looking for about 60 to 65 knots over the threshold here. Got a little bit low there, just make a small correction. And ease the aircraft into ground effect. Close the throttle. Try not to balloon it. And then hold off and then touch down. And that's how to fly an ILS approach.